President Biden speaking to supporters in Michigan after surveying his big boy news conference. In the meantime, watch out, Joe. You may have survived your big boy news conference, but the Democratic big guns are calculating their next move in their coup to remove you. Barack Obama and Nancy Pelosi have reportedly spoken with each other about Joe Biden and the future of his campaign. Axios reports that there's a group of, quote, very connected Democrats, mostly veterans of the Obama and Clinton administrations, who are plotting hourly to get him to withdraw quickly. Hillary Clinton is cracking jokes about how it's hard to take away grandpa's keys while speaking to a private gathering of influential Democrats. And poor Joe can't even trust the people who work for him. His campaign staffers are leaking like crazy to the media. It is people who are actually working on the president's reelection effort who privately are saying after two weeks since the debate that this just isn't something that he can turn around. These aides have basically come to the conclusion of is that that he does have to step aside and that to do that, they have to convince him of of the need to do that. Even the left's biggest cultural icons are kicking Joe Biden while he's down. Check out this brutal jab from Jon Stewart on Biden's debate disaster. I don't know of a job interview that you could have gone on and delivered the performance that was delivered by Joe Biden and gotten a job. And I'm not talking about the presidency. I'm talking about, like, cashier at Home Depot, like, a job that you would not think Okay, that that is the hardest job in the entire world. All right, Jesse, we've heard about the aides to Obama and Clinton. What about Obama himself? He hasn't spoken. That's purposeful. He doesn't want his fingerprints on it, but they're all over it. What does it tell you? It tells me he wants it. I'm out, but he doesn't want to be too blunt because that's going to force Joe to dig in even harder. I just love how casually the media is reporting there's a coup. <laughs> and it's like you're going through your email and you're like, oh, True. they want a four o'clock meeting on a Friday. Great. Up oh, coup against the sitting president. Up oh, 15 percent off Neiman Marcus today. All right. Like, do people, <laughs> it's just like, oh, one of those things, a coup. Oh, it's a coup. And this is the second one. They did it against Trump, too. Yeah. And now they're doing it against Joe. Now, when they did it against Trump, it made a lot of Republicans back Trump harder. Right. This may make people on the Democrat side back Biden harder. I'm backing Biden harder because so they're why? trying to do this to him. It's so unfair. And it is. Because Welcome if, to the team, you two. We'll take it. <laughs> for now. If, if they wanted him out because he was mentally unfit, 25th Amendment. Mm -hmm. That's an honest assessment. 25th Amendment. But they don't want him out because of his mentality. They want him out because he has bad poll numbers. Mm -hmm. McCain had bad poll numbers. Dole had horrible poll numbers. They knew in September he was going to lose. Jimmy Carter, imagine Jimmy Carter's poll numbers on July 4th going against Reagan. They didn't get rid of Carter then. Did they just give it your best shot? This is the game we're playing. There's a primary. They rigged it. But then they have <laughs> votes for the primary. You have to play by the rules. They have to live with the decisions they made. Yep. He's got a 32% approval rating. He's got a 27% chance of winning re-election. But it's not really because of his age, Janine. It's because of his policies. He's yeah. got horrible policies, and the Democrats want to make it about the age to distract it from the policies. But he's in this position, and he was in this position before the debate because of his policies. You know, um, what about, Katie, the fact that it seemed that Obama uh, really took to Kamala Harris when he said in 2013, she's the most beautiful attorney general in the country. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he was fawning over her, and Michelle was not too happy. I thought she was going to hit him with the right hook. But <laughs> um, do you think that, uh, you know, there's a movement just to put Kamala at the top? There's consideration of that, but she's attached to Joe Biden. And to Jesse's point, they are very unpopular when it comes to their policies. Biden is one of the most unpopular presidents in the history of polling. And Kamala Harris, that was a marriage of convenience to try and get Joe Biden over the finish line the first time. She doesn't poll as well as Joe Biden does. And for the Democrats, they have this big problem where it's not just the ticket of Kamala and Joe. It's Gavin Newsom polls below Trump. Mm -hmm. You had Pritzker polling below Trump. They're having a really hard time finding someone who can beat Trump 
at the polls on these issues. But I got to say, you know, the Biden's got to be pretty nervous that the Clintons are starting to hang around, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, probably a little <laughs> nervous about them. I find it really interesting to see who is backing Biden very publicly and who's not. Like AOC and Bernie Sanders, yep, for example, are very pro-Biden which is actually a pretty good reflection of how he is governed. He's not been a moderate candidate he's, mm -hmm. or, or president. He's been a very far left president. And you're also seeing this class war happening within de the Democratic Party. And I think actually Biden has a point when he says the elites are out to get me. Can't get more elite than uh, Barack Obama and George Clooney. Yep. You know, um, the, when Joe was running, it was Clyburn, James Clyburn, who saved him in, uh, in, South, in, Carolina. in, yeah, in South Carolina in 2019. Uh, Clyburn kind of has been back and forth. He's not real clear. What, what do you think is going on with him? Yeah, I mean, he doubled down on his support of the president in that most recent interview. To your point, uh, Judge, he made <laughs> Joe Biden president in South Carolina. The Congressional Black Caucus, which is the core of my party, right, mm -hmm. uh, along with the Hispanic Caucus, have met with the president. They've uh, endorsed him, re-endorsed him. There's a lot of energy uh, behind him for that. I think to Jesse's point, you know, the process has played out, right? If you have folks coming in last minute, 14 million people voted. Now you can say really wasn't a primary because no one else really ran against the president. Same with, uh, you know, Trump when he was up for re-election. He had some challengers uh, back in 20. Uh, but he has cleared the field. It's his to win or lose going into uh, going into November. Yes, and we agree with you. You're on my team now. That's I heard us. Right. Uh, right. Rousing Greg. endorsement. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. oh, my Joe. gosh. Uh, Let's go, right. Joe. Greg, you know, uh, the uh, the Obama people and the Clinton people, they're all like, uh, you know, they're throwing in the towel, allegedly. Uh, but they're the ones who held up the towel for all those years. Mm, I wouldn't touch that towel. <laughs> you know, uh, they're, uh, Hillary and Obama are like, they're like the long-suffering understudy, hoping that the lead gets crushed by a stage prop you know it's gonna it's going to this sound like a forgotten Columbo episode where an ambitious older female politician invites the president out for a hike and then two go out and one comes back and the one that comes back is wearing a pantsuit as always <laughs> but it is interesting Katie you do bring it up the thing about that Biden being a far left president why are the only people still really really supporting Biden mm -hmm. is the hard left progressives like the squad uh, Bernie Sanders and the rabid firebrands on on social media and and you know mainstream media. It's because he was he was and he will remain their progressive Trojan horse. Mm -hmm. You know the, the their support is a quid pro quo, which is Latin for you owe us, old man. So if you're a moderate Democrat, think twice about voting for him because you aren't electing him, you're electing them. And at this point, he won't have another term, so he will do everything they want. And this is where you got all of these horrible decisions like the climate bill and, and, the, and the college whatever crap that he pushed through. And the border. And, and the border. And inflation. And the crazy and DAs. And, bail, and the crazy actually. DAs, yeah. Yep. And the Supreme Court has said he can do whatever he wants pretty much now, too. Mm. Oh, oh my God. God. No, other than this student <laughs> loan. Come on. All right, a huge week starting on Monday. The Five is going to be live from the RNC in Milwaukee. Don't miss it. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.